Welcome fellow ecologists to chapter 8, Social Relations. At the introduction of this chapter, your book goes through some of the amazing things that happen in the coral reef in terms of interactions between species and among species. Uh, this is certainly what we've found in our research down in, in Grenada and also in Jamaica. Uh, several of you in this class have experienced this and the uh, tremendous variety of species there and the way the fish uh, defend their territories and the cleaning stations that they set up and then the way the uh, marine worms protect themselves by pulling in when you come up close to them is just fascinating. So during this chapter we're going to talk about mate selection, the sexual selection that occurs uh, between males and males and females, and then look at uh, non-random mating even in plants in the wild radish, and then look at some of the species that cooperate in raising their young or uh, working together in defending their territory. And then we'll get into the truly social uh, animals, the insects and the mole rats that have the, a caste system. Uh, they, they all work together um, as if they were a single organism. During this chapter, we're dealing with some terms and concepts and actually areas of study that you may not be familiar with. For example, behavioral ecology, which is uh, a study of how animals use behavior in order to deal with this relationship between other organisms and their environment. And then the area of sociobiology, which involves the actual study of the social relations of animals. And then we get into this concept of fitness, which is very different than the idea of fitness that we typically have. And it really relates to the contribution that an individual can make in terms of offspring. We need to deal with some fundamental questions within the context of, of this discipline. Things like, what is male and female? Uh, in this case, females are those organisms that produce the larger, uh, more genetically costly gametes. That would be eggs. And males produce the smaller gametes uh, that have less energy or cost less energy, and that would be sperm. And then the female uh, Reproduction is really limited by resources and access to resources, whereas male reproduction is limited by access to a mate. So we have these basic kinds of differences between male and female in this context. Hermaphrodites are those organisms that have both male and female functions, and usually we find this in the, the plant kingdom where some trees, for example, will have both the uh, flowers for males and females on the same tree. Mate choice or sexual selection is really the, the result of uh, some type of competition between individuals or one of them ends up with greater mating success than another, and that's broken into two separate categories. The intrasexual selection, where males will be competing against each other, and then the, the male that wins is the one that gets to mate with the females. And you can see that in this area with the red-winged blackbirds that uh, defend a territory and fight off other males. In intersexual selection, the female selects the male from 
a group of males. And the bird of paradise is a good example here. He clears a, a dance floor and on the in the forest, and then he does a display near that dance floor, and then the female comes by and picks the male that has the, the best dance floor and, and the best dance moves. One of the key studies in this chapter that I'd really like you to read over carefully is the study that was done with guppies by Endler and then the follow-up work by Kodrick and Brown, uh, or Kodrick Brown. This study is based on the idea that guppies that are the male guppies that are more colorful attract the female guppies but when these male guppies are exposed to predation then they, that causes a problem because their bright colors make them more vulnerable to predation so the, um, through a series of experiments in ponds in the lab and also in nature on the island of Trinidad and Tobago which is south just south of Grenada, uh, they did field experiments where they were actually able to put the guppy, guppies into an environment where there was less predation and they actually saw those uh, the colorful spots develop. And in the case of the field study, these fish that developed the spots were the same fish that had been in the area where predation had been occurring. So it was just a really neat experiment that clearly demonstrated how the predation was reducing the expression of these bright colors on the guppies. So they were really balancing the survival versus attracting females. The other thing that Kodrick Brown uh, contributed to this was that it, the males also uh, tended to have better success with females if they were dominant over other males. So even males that didn't have the bright colors but were dominant had a higher success of mating with females. Another fascinating study that's explained in the book about mate selection is the adult scorpion flies and how they actually offer a, a dead arthropod as an attraction, attractant to the female and the large dominant male scorpion flies who guard those and the, uh, since the dead arthropods are in a limited supply and they actually sometimes steal those from spider webs. Uh, the large scorpion flies are, are the ones that are able to offer this prize to the females and then they mate with the females while the females are feeding on the dead arthropods. Some of the other males try to attract females by uh, regurgitating some food and, and uh, then standing next to that hoping that they will attract females. This non-random mating process is also seen in, in some plants in the experiment that's explained in the book for uh, wild radish. They showed clearly that some of the plants that were providing the pollen had better success than others. So they were able, to, again, to clearly demonstrate that there is non-random mating even in plants. The book provides a couple of good examples of sociali sociality and cooperative breeders with the green wood hoopoes and the African lions. The African lions are particularly interesting because the females form a group and they take care of each other's young, uh, nursing each other's young and defending them, and then they cooperative, cooperatively go out together to hunt, and um, then they, they defend the young against the males. The males, on the other hand, form small coalitions 
uh, where the females are mainly related uh, in the group, the males may or may not be related, but and that keeps the group really small so that uh, a, a less dominant individual will still have a chance to mate. So the benefits that cooperative breeders enjoy then is the, an improvement in the overall f fitness of the group. And remember that fitness is, is defined in that ability to pass on um, your gametes to the next generation, to pass on your genes to the next generation. And also, and as we saw with the wood hoopos, the idea that a territory can be inherited from generation to generation when these groups are working together. What we end up then with is this genetic, family genetic material being passed on even though some of the individuals aren't involved in reproduction and that's called kin selection. The last group to talk about under sociology is eusociality. These are um, groups that have three major characteristics and I'd really like you to know specifically these characteristics. And that is that individuals of more than one generation live together and that there are a number of different individuals that work together to take care of the young and that the uh, individuals in this community are broken up into reproductive castes. So in the, in the case of ants, which is one of the big examples that they give here, the leafcutter ants, there, there is one female that um, produces the eggs, and then there are there's a separate group of males that will mate with that female, and then there are uh, female workers then that uh, do a lot of the different jobs. It's really amazing to think that there's a uh, species of mammals that actually has a system like this, the naked mole rats, and their system is very, very similar to the ants structure of, of its community. Uh, if you would like to see a colony of naked mole rats, they do have that set up at the Brookfield Zoo near Chicago. Thank you.